Hello and uh, welcome to today's class. Uh, I hope you could uh, go through what I discussed uh, in the last class, uh, but we will have a brief recap uh, of the last lecture uh, today before we uh, look at the other aspects of uh, asymmetric CC bond formation. So uh, towards the uh, first part of our last lecture that we saw was how uh, enol silyl ethers uh, can be um, made to react with uh, strong electrophiles. Uh, we need uh, strong electrophiles such as E plus uh, as a carbocation uh, or for example as we discuss towards the end we can have uh, a CH2Cl and generate uh, upon reaction with Lewis acid say for example SNCl4 or LCl3 or anything and then of course we can generate the carbocation and this carbocation is generated because the sulfur stabilizes this carbocation. So this is how one can then allow the reaction of such electrophiles to take place uh, with enol silyl ether and uh, introduce uh, CH2 uh, S phenyl group here and uh, have a CC bond formation. Now uh, this is possible because um, the electrophile is very strong, uh, but as a general uh, rule uh, in enol silyl ethers are uh, not a very strong nucleophiles, they are weak uh, nucleophiles and therefore uh, we need to have a strong electrophile to react with it. We, we saw various aspects of it and saw even how a tertiary cation can be uh, uh, allowed to react with these enol silyl ethers and we can get the uh, ketones having a tertiary butyl group uh, alpha to it which is not easy to uh, introduce uh, by traditional means. So enol silyl ether is a, is a good option to go for such uh, reactions. Uh, but then there are disadvantages as we discussed that uh, only strong electrophiles can be reacted. But on the other hand, we can also react with this, uh, this with uh, say methyl lithium or lithium amide as we discussed or even tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride, uh, tetrabutyl ammonium uh, fluoride uh, and then we can generate the corresponding enolate uh, upon uh, the, when these, these uh, particular uh, nucleophiles, any one of them, this or this or this then they react with the, the carbon silicon bond is broken and the enolate is generated. Now so enol silyl ether can be made uh, reactive and as a reactive nucleophile or an enolate upon reaction with say uh, these species like methyl lithium or lithium amide or tetrabutyl ammonium fluoride. And then we saw the uh, chemistry of imine, uh, so we had a uh, uh, something like this where we had uh, an imine where this particular proton alpha to the imine group can be deprotonated and we can generate an enamine uh, of this type uh, where we can write the resonance structure as, as this and uh, what it indicates is that the M plus which is what is going to come from base. Uh, so there has to be an M plus here, there has to be an M plus here as a counter cation. This counter cation will remain close to the negative charge on the nitrogen because it is more electronegative and then this allows the CC bond formation to take place. Then uh, we also saw the uh, uh, other aspects of it uh, where the imine chemistry was done with chiral uh, amines and in chiral amines we saw how asymmetric induction uh, via CC bond formation can be done and in the process we also introduced SAMP and RAMP as two uh, uh, hydrazines uh, which allow uh, the uh, imine uh, to form and this imine upon deprotonation then allows uh, 
uh, in, in amine to form. Now this, this enamine is a different enamine as compared to the enamine developed by Stork because in the Stork enamine case the um, nitrogen did not have a negative charge whereas in this particular case we have a negative charge and the M plus plays a very crucial role and that is exactly what is done in the case of chiral amines, uh, uh, SAMP and uh, RAMP cases where the methoxy methyl group uh, uh, next to the uh, uh, attached onto the nitrogen uh, is of course uh, uh, useful for the uh, chelation and thus guiding the asymmetric induction. So these are the things we saw in the last class and now we see uh, what after the CC bond formation has taken place uh, using SAMP or RAMP type of hydrazines and uh, then what happens uh, the, uh, to the products or what can be done to the products which are uh, obtained after the CC bond formation has occurred. Now this is how the, uh, the product of the uh, SAMP or RAMP type is uh, uh, written and now what can be done with it. Of course we can uh, do the ozonolysis of the carbon nitrogen bond or we can uh, do the hydrolysis of the carbon nitrogen bond with the help of methyl iodide and hydrogen chloride to uh, form the corresponding ketone. So now this we can regenerate it. On the other hand uh, we can directly react with uh, uh, this uh, dithiol to prepare the dithiene like this in the presence of BF3 etherate. So uh, without hydrolyzing the, uh, this hydrazone uh, to the ketone and then reacting with this uh, dithiol in the presence of a Lewis acid. Uh, to get this, we can directly react this uh, hydrazone itself because then the carbon nitrogen bond acts like a, a living group. So it is very similar in terms of its reactivity uh, to, to, uh, to like a carbonyl group and therefore we can uh, prepare the dithiene and this is 1,3-dithiene uh, in, in, uh, in the same pot. Now we can also reduce the uh, carbon nitrogen double bond first with lithium aluminum hydride to go to the corresponding amine and then when we do the rennie nickel uh, based reduction then of course we have a nitrogen, nitrogen uh, bond cleavage and that leads to the formation of uh, if R1 is H otherwise there should be R1 here and then of course we get to the corresponding uh, amine. So we have this particular uh, reduction leading to amine. So we can get to a ketone uh, or we can prepare a protected ketone as a dithiene and um, or we can go to the corresponding amine. Now if R1 is H, uh, is H then we can expect uh, this type of uh, intermediate uh, product to form uh, which upon reaction with uh, uh, per acid uh, like this. So we have R3 here and R2 here and we have a hydrogen here. So if we do a per acid uh, treatment to this we expect that we can have this intermediate to form uh, where the uh, an oxide can form and this an oxide then allows this type of cleavage of course there will be positive charge to form and then that leads to the formation of the corresponding nitrile C triple bond N. So this is how this particular molecule has been obtained. And of course now this nitrile group can be then converted into uh, different uh, other functional groups. So this, these are various uh, uh, conversions uh, which we can carry out of the hydrazone that is formed from SAMP and RAMP based hydrazines after the CC bond formation has occurred. 
The drawbacks uh, of these uh, reactions are that these are expensive reagents uh, and they are uh, definitely going to contribute to the cost of the product that needs to be evaluated at the end of the reaction. Of course, you have to expose uh, to LDA for several hours to carry out the deprotonation and the alkylation uh, needs to be done at very low temperature as you saw as low as minus 100 degrees uh, temperature of course and then after the alkylation has been done you slowly bring the reaction to the room temperature. And uh, then uh, you have to you cleave the hydrozone and this limits the functional group compatibility because suppose as we saw in the case of uh, uh, preparation of the nitrile we cleaved it uh, by means of uh, paracid treatment. Suppose your molecule contains a double bond then there is will be a problem in terms of uh, the paracid reacting with the double bond also. So uh, functional group compatibility has to be seen. So these are some of the drawbacks which are associated with SAMP and RAM. But then these were found to be very useful uh, reactions at the beginning of uh, the asymmetric induction based uh, uh, CC bond formations were looked at it. So it is a very useful contribution that needs to be appreciated and also uh, learned how these were introduced and how they were useful. Then at the same time Wolfgang Apolzer in Switzerland introduced camphor saltums as interesting chiral auxiliaries. The camphor saltums look like this which is 1s minus 210 camphor saltum or like this which is 1r plus 210 camphor saltum. Now these are derived from uh, camphor which is a naturally occurring molecule and uh, the reason to choose such kind of uh, auxiliaries or ligands was basically because the exo part that is the upper part of the uh, camphor here in both all the cases is basically uh, highly sterically hindered and therefore the reactions occur from the endo side from the lower side. So now let us see some reactions for example if we take one of these uh, camphor saltum and react with this acid chloride in the presence of sodium hydride then we get this kind of dinophile which is a uh, chiral auxiliary containing dinophile. Now if we allow this dinophile to react with uh, cyclopentadiene in the presence of ethyl dichloroaluminum at minus 78 degrees then the Diels order reaction occurs from the lower side because the upper side as I mentioned is sterically blocked and therefore the reaction occurs from the lower side and leads to the formation of this kind of uh, Diels order adduct which contains the chiral auxiliary. But when lithium aluminum hydride mediated reduction is done then this particular part gets cleaved and the corresponding alcohol uh, is released uh, and of course we regenerate the chiral auxiliary. Now these reactions have been found to be in high yield and high enantio selectivity. A full account of the uh, lot of work that has been done by camphor uh, uh, saltum based uh, asymmetric synthesis has been reviewed recently in tetrahedron asymmetry. Now what is happening is basically uh, the reaction from the top phase uh, when the cyclopentadiene is approaching the uh, dienophile it could approach either from the top phase or it could approach from the bottom phase and uh, the top phase is not preferred because of this uh, steric hindrance here. The lower phase is the one that is uh, what is preferred or the bottom phase is preferred. Now as you can see that uh, when the um, uh, diene is approaching uh, from the top phase if this is what is the top phase which is not preferred uh, then this is the kind of intermediate that it will form where this carbon carbon bond basically is pointing towards us and that we can see that if we just turn uh, around uh, uh, on the on the paper uh, of uh, around 90 degrees of the paper 
we can come up to this particular. So, this and this are basically same except that we have carried out the reduction here. So, basically if you just turn it around you will see that the double bond comes on the right side and then of course uh, we will have the methyl group which is going back side will turn towards uh, above upper side and then you get to this particular geometry which is what is reflected here. On the other hand when the reaction take place on the bottom phase then this is the intermediate that is going to form and which again by, by simply twisting out or turning uh, not breaking any bonds twisting appears like this. So, this particular product and these are basically uh, as you can see they are mirror images of each other and thus if we uh, see that there is a facial selectivity. So, if the diels order reaction is uh, allowing a discrimination of the phase therefore, this product is going to form uh, exclusively. This is also reflected in another example in which if we take uh, this type of uh, group attached to the uh, ligand then uh, we are uh, favoring it uh, to, to put it in this particular fashion, uh, but we can also think about another way of uh, attaching. So, basically this is coming from say you have a uh, acid chloride and then we have uh, this group here and to which the, uh, the ligand or the auxiliary is attached. So when the nitrogen based auxiliary attaches it attachment takes place here and we can either write it in this fashion or we can write it in this fashion. This is the one that is more preferred because for, for the reason that uh, on the top phase is going to be sterically hindered and uh, this particular one is not sterically hindered. And therefore, the carbonyl group orients in this fashion to which the, uh, the cuprate then attacks onto this carbon and then this goes as a leaving group leading to the formation of this uh, uh, auxiliary contained intermediate which uh, of course can be reduced with uh, lithium aluminum hydride and uh, then once we get the corresponding uh, CH2OH after this uh, uh, path is reduced the amide part is reduced we can carry out the swan oxidation and eventually to form this. Uh, beta gamma unsaturated aldehyde having a CC bond formed here by the cuprate that we have added. So, uh, the reaction is obviously taking place from the alpha side. So, the attack is taking place uh, from the alpha side that is the reason why this alpha group has come because the lower side is relatively sterically less bulky. So, if we if we take uh, this uh, this is the one that we took where the alpha track was taking place from this side and uh, if we take its uh, mirror image which is what is this particular one. So, if we write the same one as uh, here. So, this is going to be its mirror image and that is what is shown here. So, if we take this its mirror image even then again the alpha attack will take place because alpha attack is more preferable because this side attack is sterically blocked and therefore uh, again alpha attack will give this uh, uh, methyl group to be formed from the alpha side. But then if we just turn it around 180 degrees then of course this becomes uh, beta oriented which will upon uh, reduction and oxidation will give a product like this. So, from this we had got this product and from this particular mirror image we have got this product here. So, this leads to the uh, product having beta oriented methyl group whereas here it is alpha oriented. So, there are two enantiomers of each other. So, we can um, carry out such CC bond formations uh, by two different types of uh, camphor saltum based uh, dienophiles or uh, Michael acceptors or stratic materials which would allow 
uh, SN2 prime of reaction to take place. SN, it is essentially an SN2 prime type of reaction that is taking place and we can get two different types of enantiomers in very high enantioselectivity and high yield. Now we go uh, to the next uh, set of reactions which is uh, basically an aldol type of reaction. So if we uh, start with an aldehyde and react with a, with a ketone uh, of uh, any kind then what we can expect that if the aldehyde uh, does not have uh, an alpha hydrogen so suppose we have a uh, benzaldehyde then what we can expect is that anion can form here and then we can expect a syn uh, product to form or an anti product to form. So uh, right now we have not taken any uh, base or any uh, product which has any uh, uh, elements of uh, symmetry or uh, asymmetry. So what we are doing right now is we are producing this syndiol uh, or the antidiol as racemic. So basically they are form, uh, forming racemic products but now right now we are thinking about uh, diastereomers. So we can expect either this syn product which is called as erythro product or anti product which is called trio product generally is something that we need we can form. So if we carry out this uh, lol reaction uh, basically uh, it will form this mixture where from syn or anti aldols need to be separated. Now is there a way by which uh, we can control these reactions and uh, uh, get only one of them as the major product because we will have to eventually see how they can be done as an asymmetric aldol reaction. For that purpose uh, there is a directed aldol uh, reaction that is you direct the regiochemistry as well as control the stereochemistry. So uh, you can have a, a, a preformed enol ether or enolate of one of the components and then carry out the aldol condensation which is what is called a Mukayama aldol condensation. So that means we start with a, with a ketone and uh, we can make an enolate and then we uh, react with the aldehyde here and then we can have the um, uh, corresponding aldol product where the uh, electrophilic uh, carbonyl group could have a chelation with the M that is the metal attached to the enolate and then that leads to the formation of the corresponding aldol after the hydrolysis has taken place. Now uh, this newly formed aldol is essentially trapped as a metal chelate complex and that is the reason why we need the hydrolysis to take place. Now this, lead, this trapping can efficiently be done if we have a lithium uh, ion as, uh, as a counter ion and therefore if the reaction say for example of such a ketone is done with LDA at minus 70 degrees in the presence of uh, HMPA basically to uh, allow the, the nucleophilicity of the LDA to be high because that HMPA coordinates with the lithium plus and the uh, uh, LDA becomes more basic uh, or better uh, as a base. And then you generate uh, at that temperature we generate an enolate uh, from the uh, uh, less substituted side and that reacts with the, with the acetyl this uh, propanaldehyde to form this aldol which upon of course uh, has to be hydrolyzed and we get the 90 percent of it. The lithium essentially traps the aldol by chelate formation but solvents must be aprotic like ether or THF. We cannot use uh, obviously protic solvents because we are using LDA and therefore ether or THF is used. We can uh, also use uh, enol silyl ether as we discussed the chemistry of the enol silyl ether for uh, directed aldol condensation under acidic uh, conditions and uh, like uh, as I have shown here the, uh, the, 
the TiCl4 can be used as a Lewis acid to activate the carbonyl group and the carbonyl group when it is activated by titanium tetrachloride the Cl- minus, which is released from here uh, reacts with the uh, silicon and cleaves the oxygen silicon bond and eventually it is trapped as the titanium uh, a complex like this which upon hydrolysis leads to the formation of the aldol. The advantage is the TiCl4 is the best catalyst, retroaldol uh, reaction is prevented because every aldol reaction in principle can be a reversible reaction, but the titanium uh, kiriate complex like this here uh, stops the reversion and uh, the disadvantage of course is that such reactions are non stereoselective compared to using lithium or boron enolates. So, this, uh, this is something that we need to uh, very carefully address and um, uh, this enol silyl ether based chemistry although it is useful um, uh, developed by uh, Mukayama, but it has some disadvantages. Now, the stereochemistry in aldol reactions uh, one can see that um, we can get uh, a syn product as I mentioned, but it will also be uh, its mirror image present as uh, the corresponding uh, syn product and in a similar fashion we can have NT and also its mirror image. So, basically there has to be an internal stereochemical control which uh, uh, of course will uh, lead to diastereo selection. That means that uh, between syn and anti if we get a syn as uh, say 90 and anti as 10 then we have basically a diastereomeric uh, selection or diastereo selection control uh, because we are still dealing with the uh, 90 the, this plus minus uh, enantiomers. On the other hand we have to have absolute stereochemical control that means either plus or minus or that means that out of all these four possibilities if we can get only one as the major product then of course we have to say that it is going to be an absolute stereochemical control or enantio selective reaction. So, uh, we have to have both diastereo selection as well as enantio selection both we need to have so that we can get out of these four possibilities only one uh, product as the major product then such a reaction will be highly useful and it will be an enantio selective reaction in terms of aldol chemistry. A lot of work has been done uh, and a uh, lot of auxiliaries that have been uh, introduced for such aldol reactions and uh, we will study uh, one of them which is uh, very useful and, but then that requires the uh, enolate uh, based uh, understanding of what kind of enolates are useful. As I mentioned just now that boron and lithium based enolates are very useful. So, we will uh, stop it today at this stage and uh, look at the, uh, the enolates which are boron or lithium based enolates and how do they allow the uh, enantio selective uh, aldol reaction uh, to occur and how they are useful in uh, modern day organic chemistry. Till uh, then I think uh, you should go through this uh, whatever I have taught in this class and uh, we will see you in the next class till then bye and thank you.